Hi, this is Shiva Rajaya from vitalcoaching.com. We are talking about vital sex and tantric sex and the topic for this video is 10 essential facts that you should know about tantric sex. My aim here is to empower your life and having a fantastic, juicy, interesting, exciting, fulfilling sex life is part of being a life master part of getting this tremendous sense of life satisfaction when you wake up in the morning and being able to play with energies and stream in ecstatic ways. So, <clears throat> tantric sex is really powerful. And as far as I'm concerned, it radically changed my life, my, my perspective on relationships, on uh, interactions with women and uh, with basically any living form on this planet as well. So here are 11 facts that I want you to understand, get and transmit uh, and start activating into your life. What I'm recording here could be really the topic for a whole book. Uh, I've got some of them <clears throat> on my website. Here you go, one of them is Tantric Sex, Energy Pathways to Absolute Bliss and Ecstasy. And it's on vitalcoaching.com. Francisco Bujan, that's my original name. And uh, you, have, you can order them from Amazon. You know, if you go to vitalcoaching.com, you will see all the links there for this. And then there is this one, which is a small booklet, Vital Sex Kamayama. Kamayama means sexual mastery, again on vitalcoaching.com, go and check them out. So, let's go straight to the point. Facts about tantric sex that will radically change your life and your sex life. So, the first one, energy sex. When you engage in, into tantric sex and you become a tantrika, you start shifting the focus from physical pleasure-based sensations and activations to something which be becomes much more energetic. After a while, you notice that you don't even need to touch your partner to actually start connecting sexually with them because you engage the energy body. So this is a vast topic of energetic activation. But if you want to remember just one simple fact, start integrating this concept in your life the idea of energy sex. It doesn't mean that we neglect the physical aspect. Of course, we are still physical beings and we enjoy the pleasure of our senses, of our physical senses, but we start expanding, really expanding a lot into the spheres of the energetics. And that radically changes your experience. It makes it deeper. <clears throat> The second point is to step away from the idea that you need ejaculation for sex to be fulfilled, especially for men, but for women as well. When you see your male partner not ejaculating, holding back from ejaculating, preserving his sexual energy, encourage him to do so and sustain that path. So, no ejaculation. Ejaculation is not needed. Ejaculation by choice is a possibility as well. Uh, but in my experience, <clears throat> the tantric sex or the sexual energy is going to be boosted immensely if you keep on sustaining and preserving your sexual energy. Because then it starts impacting and radiating all over your body. Point number three, orgasmic states. Instead of thinking about orgasm as a peak experience that rises up and then down, you think about it like states of energy that you start entering into. And uh, you will notice after a while, when you engage into tantric sex, that you develop a blissful, ecstatic life with an orgasmic state. You are in an orgasmic state, in a state of uh, ecstasy, energetic explosion, not just when you are having sex, but it becomes like a permanent or semi-permanent state of being, of energetic state. 
It means that your body and your mind are sexually turned on on a regular basis. It stays like that. It doesn't go away. So this is like a tremendous juice, sexual juice, that you can start investing and directing in all aspects of your life. You know, it's literally like being flooded by a fresh flow of, of energy in permanence. And uh, that's a state of being that you cultivate, that you build up, and eventually becomes like your natural state. Point number four is practice giver-receiver roles. Very often when you engage into sex, you will just be in this ongoing exchange where you are giving and receiving at the same time. It means that it's more like a dance and you play with that dance together. Now there is an area where you can expand, where you consciously decide to be the giver or to be the receiver, and then your partner is going to play the opposite role. And so what this does is that it allows you to relax in the sensations. For instance, if you are the receiver, you are going to totally surrender to the energy and be much more aware and present because you don't have to serve or engage um, with the other person. You are there totally passive and just receiving. So this allows you to boost your sensations and explore uh, sensual awareness from a place that is um, much more present. Okay, so playing with both of these roles and adding them to your sex life. Point number five is breathing. When you start engaging in sex, sexual practices, tantric sex, and you start breathing consciously, observing the breath, observing your breath, adding dynamic techniques, adding slow techniques, retaining your breath. So you use breath as an engine inside of you, like really a pumping system that is going to activate sensations and also connect you with your lover, especially when you are using synchronized breathing. So when you start breathing together, it will actually harmonize your in and out flow and create a sensation of deep, deep connection. Point number six is structure and discipline. So I know that those words can feel a little bit scary or a little bit challenging within the sexual context, but adding a little bit of structure, a little bit of discipline, a little bit of ritual to your sex life is going to massively impact the level of pleasure, presence uh, that you have when you are engaging sexually. The way it works is because you have a certain time frame or a certain structure or a certain set of exercise that you want to make, instead of just being in a passionate free flow, you are going to add an element of awareness, consciousness and structure and direction with clear intentions. You know, it's a little bit like preparing a meal. You arrive in your kitchen and you just start grabbing things and putting them together without really thinking or without planning it. You are going to create maybe a meal which is going to be nice, but what if you can really add a little bit of understanding and start <clears throat> you know, creating this meal from a place where you have a, a clear intention? You know, you, you, you plan your dessert, you plan your mid course, you plan your salads and so on. And uh, that's going to add a certain, a certain understanding and a certain uh, awareness to what you're preparing. So this is another point here in the tantric sex, is the idea of structure and, uh, and discipline and awareness and consciousness and understanding of what you are doing. Point number seven is tantric dates, tantric sex dates. So again, instead of waiting until one, two o'clock in the morning when you come back from a party or an event and then you start engaging in this moment where you're already extremely tired, you don't have much energy left, then you start having sex at that moment. Instead of going through that traditional line, you actually create a space which is sacred <clears throat> and protected where you're not going to be disturbed and you meet early. You don't meet like in the middle of the night. 
you meet like maybe six o'clock in the evening or even earlier you can have a tantric sex date in the morning as well uh, but this is the idea it is that you protect the space you have a time frame where you have at least four hours available for your tantric sex date and if you are you know uh, very busy you might be a couple already and you only have like half an hour for the tantric sex date that's fine as well but the point is really to protect that space and make it a top priority point number eight slow down when you slow down and you don't allow your passion to fully take over passion is great okay as well you have different rhythms but right now we are really exploring the idea of enhancing increasing your sensations so when you slow down what happens is that you become more aware more present the sensations become more subtle and it triggers a sense of pleasure which is more grounded you see the difference between how I was speaking in the beginning and then when I slow down there is something that anchors itself takes time to dive in and this will radically change uh, your tantric sex experience it means that you slow down in the way you touch your partner you slow down in the way you breathe you slow down in the way you move that's the uh, the idea <clears throat> Point number nine is create a safe space. So safe space means um, a space where you're not going to be disturbed, but also a space which is emotionally safe. You need to engage into this dimension from a place of peace, harmony, wanting to connect with your partner from a place of respect. Um, if you feel that you are uh, emotionally triggered or unstable, it's going to project a certain energy in the tantric space that doesn't necessarily allow you to relax. And uh, that's going to alter your experience and, um, you know, make you feel threatened. So creating this sense of emotional safety through communication, through kindness, through love, friendship, and uh, sustaining it, knowing how to sustain it, is one of the core skills to enhance your tantric sex experience. As I said in previous videos, it doesn't mean that you take away the fire, okay? You can engage into passion, you can engage into fights. If you have suddenly this tension coming up and you want to actually challenge your partner on something, it's okay to go that way as well, but do it within a context where it's not just a chaotic overflow of emotions you don't control. Try to feel into being the master of what's happening there rather than just a victim of an overflow of negative emotions. So this is something to keep in mind. Create a safe space. It's a safe space as well. Physically, it means that you don't do anything that would put your life or your partner's life in danger or their health, okay? and, uh, and uh, you create emotional safety for both of you. Point number 10 is this dimension of secret. Sex is secret, life is secret, but you can even make it more secret and bring awareness into that by you know, consciously invoking forces in the invisible. I use the concept of, of Shiva and Shakti, goddesses, gods, you know, mantras. Look, look at this space here. This is one of the, the, the rooms in, in my temple here. There are mantras everywhere, deities. Here is a beautiful uh, uh, image of um, uh, Kuan Yin or, or Tara. Then I have mantras all around which create a fire circle. There is beauty. Um, you know, it's creating a sacred space and consciously invoking forces in the invisible which are going to activate the tantric sex space. The last point, point number 11, is presence. Presence means that you are 
there. You're not being distracted, you're not thinking about all the stuff. I mean, the thoughts come and go, of course. But the point is that when uh, you are engaging, when you are in a practice, you are really there, fully concentrated on what's happening there. So this concentration of energy and this presence is going to uh, bring a new flow of power and uh, energy into the tantric sex space. That's it. Here you have them. I'm going to read them again for you. Energy sex, no ejaculation, orgasmic states, giver-receiver roles, breathing, structure and discipline, tantra dates, slow down, safety, sacred, and presence. Go and play with this. I hope you have a great time. See you.